Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this beautiful Lord's Day. It is kind of chilly and blustery outside, but it's warm in here. Today is our annual business meeting, so if you are a visitor and don't want to stay for the business meeting, we will give you a chance to escape. The rest of you, not a chance. No, no. We will get the meeting started rather promptly, though, because brunch. So we will get to our business, and then we will join we will enjoy one another's company and one another's cooking. Let us begin our worship now with the order for confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God clothed in majesty ever since the world began, who loves us and frees us from our sins, who leads us with all the saints to everlasting life. Amen. Let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God, God our Maker and our Redeemer. Confess that we have sinned against you, thought, word, and deed. We come for refuge to your infinite mercy. You have given your only Son to die for us. Have mercy on us, for his sake, forgive us all our sins. By your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and your will, and true obedience to your word, that by your grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has had mercy on us, and God's only Son has been given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. Believing in Jesus' name, you have received power to become the children of God. You have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As people in the world, we are drawn to the sounds of danger, the wail of a siren, the rolling of thunder, the cry of a child. But as followers of Christ, we listen most of all for the sounds of Christ's coming into our very lives. Christ Jesus, open our ears to hear you calling us to true repentance. We know about wars and rumors of war, We hear news about turmoil in families and fighting among friends. As Jesus, open our ears to hear you accompany all you people, the family of friends. We hear people proclaiming that there are many paths to heaven. Christ Jesus, open our ears to hear you saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We hear news of nations, kingdoms, crumbling here on earth. Christ Jesus, open our ears to hear you declaring, my kingdom will never end. With trumpet fanfare, songs of joy and shouts of praise, may we proclaim your glorious return. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace.
Our service continues on page 147 in the front of our red hymnals. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we pray Let us pray. Almighty God, your sovereign purpose brings salvation to birth. Give us faith to be your steadfast amid the tumults of this world, trusting that your kingdom comes and your will is done through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, Jesse. So, we've had a couple of weeks off from the talking about the lessons stuff. But we did, we talked about the psalm and how that's a participatory. How's that for a big word? That's one of those things that, that the congregation and the reader both do. And we talked about the Old Testament lesson. So we must be up to the second lesson, right? Now, before we talk about that, we probably ought to talk a little bit about where do they come from. Do you suppose the pastor sits in his office and thinks, hmm, I wonder what I want to talk about today? No. <laughs> that would be a bad thing because you would hear only what the pastor wants to talk about and not necessarily what God wants us to hear. There's a list, and it's a list that goes for three years. And the, those three years, every Sunday, there are lessons that we're going to read for that Sunday. And so there's, there's year A, and we're now in year B, and then there's even a year C. And in the course of those three years, we cover 
almost every part of the Bible. Now, we don't read the whole Bible, even in those three years, but we get to almost every book in almost all of the really good stories, and we have a lesson that's usually from the Old Testament. We call that the first lesson. But we also have a second lesson. And that second lesson usually comes from those books that are after the Gospels. So they come mainly from all of those letters in the end of the New Testament. In fact, we used to call it the epistle lesson, right? Because epistle means letter, but we have a few lessons that aren't from the letters, so now we just call it the second lesson. But in those letters, Paul and some of the other writers, they answer questions that real people had about how to live out their faith. So every week, one of our lessons tells us how to live our faith out in the real things that happen in real people's lives, whether it's people who are being persecuted for their faith or people who are just trying to figure out, how do I live out my life as a Christian in the middle of all of the things going on around me? Every week, we hear something that was written to some real individual person or group telling them how they can live out their faith in the world that they live in. And it's amazing, isn't it, how often those things that someone wrote to people a long time ago have to do with us. So this week we're going to hear from Hebrews. And see if you can't figure out how maybe that has something to do with us. Sound like a good idea? Amen. Jesus, you may 
The first lesson for today is taken from the book of Daniel, the 12th chapter. The book of Daniel is an example of apocalyptic literature, which is full of strange visions and symbolism. Arising during times of great persecution, apocalyptic literature is concerned with God's revelation about the end time and the coming kingdom of God, when God will vindicate the righteous who have been persecuted. The lesson reads, At that time, Michael, the great prince, the protector of your people, shall rise. There shall be a time of anguish, such as never had occurred since nations first came into existence. But at that time, your people shall be delivered, everyone who is found written in the book. Many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 16. We will read it responsibly as it's printed in your bulletin. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. Is in the godly that are in the hand upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. I will not pour out drink offerings to such gods, never take their names upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion in my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a rich inheritance. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I set the Lord always before me. Because God is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. My heart, therefore, is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You shall show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second reading for today is taken from the book of Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Images of worship and sacrifice are used throughout Hebrews to highlight what Christ has uniquely accomplished through his death. Because we have received forgiveness through Christ's death, we live with sincere hearts by trusting in God's promises and encouraging love and good works from each other. The lesson reads, Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered up for a, sing a time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God and since then has been waiting until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us after saying, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their heart, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their law lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. Let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, 
and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. In the last week of his life, Jesus warned his disciples concerning trials that were to come upon them, upon the world. He exhorts the listener, do not be alarmed. The lesson begins. As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, be, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. The gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. <clears throat> I remember when I was about eight years old, our family went to Washington, D.C., and we did the tour of the monuments. And the Lincoln Memorial was really impressive. There sat Lincoln up there on his chair, looking both wise and compassionate at the same time. And I was. I was very impressed. But is neat and as cool as that was, the thing that really struck my imagination as an eight-year-old kid was the Washington Monument. Who would build a thing like that? It's tall and skinny, and it's got that funny point on the top, and there standing out in front of that reflecting pool, it seemed impossible that someone had actually built such a thing. I was so impressed as an eight-year-old that even now, 50 years later, that image in my mind of that great monument standing out in the middle of that beautiful park still fills me with awe. There are lots of things that we human beings do and build that are pretty impressive. That day in Jerusalem, the disciples saw Jesus coming out of the temple and they looked at that building and they said, wow, Jesus, look at the size of this building and all of these huge stones. Now, yeah, they do. They sound kind of like some hick fisherman, never been off the lake or the Sea of Galilee, and now they're in the big city and they're all odd. But of course, the truth is, is even, even the most sophisticated of us can't help but sometimes be amazed at the things we human beings can do 
and can build. You don't have to be a fisherman from Galilee or an eight-year-old kid who's never been out of Colorado Springs to be impressed by large buildings and magnificent feats of ingenuity. I remember how impressed we all were when we shot somebody in a rocket into space. We human beings can now leave the earth. And of course, who amongst us isn't amazed by that little piece of hardware that we have in our pocket? It's a computer. It's a phone. It can have every song that's ever been recorded on it and every TV show or movie that has ever been filmed. We can still call people on the phone and we can send a text message to someone on the other side of the earth. Kind of hard not to be impressed with our human ingenuity. Indeed, it might be tempting to think we humans, we've got it made. We are so smart that we can fix any problem and solve any issue. Maybe, maybe we really can save ourselves. Jesus, look at those big buildings and those giant stones. See those stones, fellas? One of these days, everyone is going to be torn down. And indeed, it wasn't too long after that that the temple was indeed destroyed. And so it is that we too may also be as impressed by wars and rumors of wars as we are by the constructive things we humans can do. You remember how amazed we all were during the Gulf War watching those smart bombs hit their target? And indeed, sometimes seems like our ability to break things and kill people even is better and bigger and more powerful than our ability to build and to create and to heal. Indeed, it sometimes seems like the whole world is coming apart. Jesus, look at the size of those buildings and those big stones. Oh, yes, look at those big buildings. But one of these days, they are all going to be torn down. But not even that will be the end. For that is just the birth pangs of God's kingdom breaking into the world. For indeed, we are able to build and to do marvelous things. And we human beings are also capable of committing all kinds of terrible horrors. But ultimately, we cannot save ourselves and we are not in charge of when the end comes. We are not. We are not the creators of this world or the saviors of this world. And we will not be the destroyers of this world either. There is still something coming. God is still in charge. All of these things are the birth pangs of God's kingdom breaking into the world. It is, especially these days, I think, easy to be overwhelmed by the horrors of the world around us, conflict and strife, political division, racial division, wars and rumors of wars, sickness and injury and damage and destruction. These things, they are not the end. 
God is still in control. The one who created us, the one who saved us, he is still our God. These things will happen. We will build monuments and we will knock down buildings. But hold on to Christ and hold on to God. For indeed, he is the one that is in charge. Oh, how the world needs us these days. Needs us and our faith. That God is bigger than the biggest monument we could build. And God is still in charge no matter what terrible horrors we commit. The world needs our faith and our love. The world needs to know that in spite of all the things they see going on around them, we need to know that these things are the birth pangs. But God is still in control. Amen. Let us continue our worship, proclaiming our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, our creator, you show us the path of life. Bless faithful people everywhere with humility as they extend compassion to those who ex have experienced harm in religious spaces. Cultivate healthy congregations that tell of and enact your reconciling love. God, in your mercy, God, our constant, you love our universe from beginning to end. As the seasons change, protect animals that migrate and hibernate. Bring them safely to a sheltered place and a more abundant season. God, in your mercy, God, our ruler, you write your law on human minds and hearts. Give wisdom to all leaders and officials to govern with insight and compassion. Make them mindful of the well-being of all people so that your world will flourish. God, in your mercy. God, our stronghold. You are, a, you are present amid disaster. We pray for those afflicted by natural disasters. Come to the aid of all survivors of earthquakes, famines, global disease, floods, hurricanes, and wildfires, and the first responders who support them. Calm their fear, supply their need, and be the solid ground beneath their feet. God, in your mercy. God, our guide, you are greater than we can imagine. Surround congregations with your expansive inclusion. Be present in the midst of disagreements, differences, and questions. Unite people of diverse viewpoints in the love of, of Christ. God, in your mercy. God, our beginning and our end. Your beloved people shine like the brightness of the sky. We thank you for the lives of all who rest in your eternal mercy, from famous saints to the people that we have loved. Assure us of your resurrection promise. God, in your mercy. Gracious God, we pray that you would also be with those who are in special need of your love and your care this day. We pray for Pat Embick and Charles Embick, Diane Reams, Ken Girardi, Ron Roberts, Kelsey Erickson, Joel Luna, Mary Beth Fair. We also offer our condolences and pray for Michael and Tony Wagner and their family as they mourn the death of Michael's uncle Jack and for the family of Ray Bassett, who passed away this week, and for all of those whom we name in our hearts. God, in your mercy, God, our wisdom and our hope, we give you thanks for the recipients of our scholarship this year, Sidney Kays, Clarissa Francisco, Blake Rottigan, Joshua Oliver, Riley Dilks, Clayton Cowan. We pray that you would continue to watch over, protect, and guide them as they come to the end of their first semesters in college. Bless them with an abiding awareness of your presence and love. Awaken in them a vision of your purpose for their lives. God, in your mercy. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
Amen. You may be seated. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it, yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You all may be seated. And for those of you who are communing along with us at home and those of you communing with your little kits, this is the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. And just so we can keep things interesting, we're going to do it the way we did it two weeks ago, not the way we did it last week. Which means we are going to all, we're going to start on the left side and we'll come down the center aisle and receive our um, bread and our wine and go back around to the, the aisle. And then the left, right side will come down the center and receive the bread and the wine and go back up the side. And there are receptacles for your glasses at the ends of the pews. body of Christ given for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We got an annual meeting in a potluck. If you, if you're, if you are a visitor for the first time with us, don't escape yet. Do we have any first-time visitors? Okay, if you need to escape, be escaping. Um, the only announcement that's right on the top of my head is, you know what? Advent's coming. Yes, Advent and Christmas are coming. So there are still some names on the um, loving gifts tree out in the fellowship hall. So if you would like to purchase gifts for some of the kids who are clients at um, CADV, grab one of those names and sign off. And Advent's coming. I'm going to need some volunteers to do the skits for our Advent services. I need an Abraham and a Sarah. And I need an Isaiah. And I need Elizabeth and Zachariah. So be thinking about that. If you'd like to volunteer, that's great. If I don't get enough volunteers, I'm going to be bugging you. So, what else have I missed announcement-wise?